All right, for today's lesson, we are going to look at the natural factors that affect ecosystems. We talked in our last lesson about cycles of matter, um, and at the end, we, we looked at how biodiversity can have an effect on those cycles and why it's important that we have a very diverse amount or number of species in an area to make sure that those cycles can continue. So today, we're going to look at some natural factors that affect ecosystems. Now, ecosystems are limited by the resources that are available. So how many organisms can live in a certain area are going to be limited by the things that they need. So things like food, water, shelter, etc. Now, those limiting factors, those are resources that limit the size of a population. So all of the individuals in a species that are living in an area are called the population. And the resources that will limit how big that population can get are what are called limiting factors. Now, that's going to vary from area to area. So in some areas, you're going to have a lot of water available, but not very much food. So the food would be a limiting factor. In other areas, you're going to have a lot of food, but not very much water. So water would be a limiting factor. Okay. So those things that will limit how big a population can get those resources, those are called limiting factors, and those are naturally occurring. Now, there are abiotic and biotic limiting factors that can affect them. Now, the abiotic ones, we've pretty much already talked about before. So the abiotic factors and biotic factors in an ecosystem, the abiotic factors tend to be limiting factors. So things like the amount of sunlight in an area will affect what kind of plants can grow. The amount of water, is there a lot, is there very little? It'll affect how many can grow, it'll affect what types of species can actually survive there. How much shelter is available for animals? What the temperature is, is it a very cold climate, very warm climate, is it somewhere in the middle? Um, the, uh, the type of weather that occurs in an area. So look at the weather in a desert, for example, versus the weather here, where we live. Very different types of weather, so that will limit what types of species can live in the area. There are others as well. All right? So pretty much um, or most of the ABOTA factors that we talked about earlier as being things that are in an ecosystem are also limiting factors. There are also biotic limiting factors, so living things that will affect how many organisms can live in a particular area. Um, one type is what is called parasitism. Pretty sure all of you have heard of the word parasite before, but a parasite is simply an organism that lives on or inside of another living thing and basically uses their host as food. So something like a mosquito, for example, would qualify as a parasite because they literally feed off of us. Now, they're called parasites because when they do this, they don't kill the host. All right, so when a mosquito eats us, it's not killing us in the process. Competition. Each member of a population has to compete for other, with others for resources. So this mosquito is competing with every other mosquito for food, water, shelter, and that sort of thing. So if this mosquito is too weak, if it's too young, too old, or if it's injured, it may not be able to survive because other members of its species will outcompete it for resources that it needs to live. Predation. Predators. So we've used the term predators and prey before. You've learned it in the past in grade 7, grade 8. But predation is also going to be a biotic limiting factor. Whether there are a lot of predators in the area will affect how much of the prey is there. All right. So that's it for this lesson. Short and sweet. Move on to the other videos and move on to the human factors that can affect ecosystems.